everyone. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me in this lovely day in the spring. Today, I'm going to talk on this topic of conflict resolution and particularly the causes and sources of the conflict. Because to be able to resolve conflict, you have to understand what are the sources and the causes of the conflict. And uh, so uh, conflict usually uh, could be from, uh, from social conflict, uh, interracial conflicts, uh, you can have international conflicts and um, you know, communal conflicts and uh, as well as uh, interpersonal conflicts and uh, then 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 self conflict so and uh, of course the, then that will come back to the 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 emotional conflicts conflicting emotions we can com call them con uh, conflicting emotions because the, the very uh, uh, the real conflict that we see uh, with uh, by people or community or race with between race and gender or or different kind of hierarchy of the society or uh, between between uh, countries or world is all to do with uh, how much uh, the the individuals have their each have their own mind and not settled mm, so um, it's a rather like a, that which disturbs and upsets you something from within. Um, then the, they actually manifest, and when you st particularly dealing with interpersonal situations, uh, the the conflicts I are always inevitable, and uh, the conflicts are not not only inevitable. Conflicts actually are that which teaches us how to grow, how to uh, how to make ourselves useful, not only to handle handle the conflicts, but how to learn from the conflicts. So conflicts are sometimes people think they, they wish there was no conflict, everything is very harmoniously, you know, like plain sailing. Life is never meant to be like that. It will be pretty boring, actually, if there was there was no conflict. So conflict is, uh, uh, is inevitable because conflict is nature of existence. Uh, what we may buddhistically call samsara, samsara Sara basic means a vicious cycle of existence, cycle of uh, you know even if it suits one it doesn't suit another you know so so therefore the the there there will always are conflict, mm, but what makes the conflict uh, to come about that that uh, that interferes people's ability to to focus their effectiveness and uh, and uh, they employ uh, the energy uh, if you really look at it when people are very fixed in their ways and uh, and they don't know uh, about that so therefore uh, there is that kind of attachment to something your fixation uh, which in Buddhist we call attachment and uh, then when you're so attached to your ethnicity or your language or your opinions your ideas uh, you naturally will be in conflict with uh, other people uh, because they too have their own point of view they are entitled to have their own say uh, but if you can't and understand where they're coming from if you're going to just just push on your own fixated views and you're not you're therefore ignorant <coughs> of the causes of your own conflict uh, which is your own attachment so the sources and the causes of the conflict are not because you have conflict with somebody they are the cause of the conflict they're not sources or cause of the conflict they're just object of your conflict the real sources or cause of conflict is both what they, their own mind brings that are that are discord, discord, discordant with yours, and also what you bring as opinions and ideas where you do that does not gel well with the other. So that's in in relation to interpersonal conflicts. If the two person has conflicts, it's because neither of them, neither of them. Uh, uh, understanding each other. So it's based on miscommunication. We call miscommunication, but neither of them knows that's the case. So therefore, it's 
ignorance. Ignorance makes the person not able to uh, care, not able to understand each other, assuming what one understands the other, but actually one hasn't checked whether what one understands is the fact what the other one is coming from. So usually people are impatient to to check with each other uh, how how where they are coming from. Is this right? What I'm seeing? Maybe it's complete misunderstanding. Usually it's all conflicts are caused by missed misunderstanding. So, which in Buddhism we call ignorance. So, most uh, most of salient feature of all conflicts is the ignorance of the problem uh, is the uh, makes that makes the conflict to stay unresolved. But so, therefore, understanding the cause of the cause and source of the conflict is important for both uh, two parties uh, in with from their own end. If they do not introspectively check what is the, they themselves are. are are doing that are not conscious, that they are doing unconsciously, saying unconsciously, assuming unconsciously, thinking what they assume is what actually it is, without actually checking. So there's a lot of all the uh, all the conflicts are, have are created uh, out of ignorance, out of unconsciousness. People are unconscious. If they did this, this will go like this to people, but they don't realize that it will be perceived totally differently. So when you, if you knew that if they are perceiving this, then you have to actually do it so that it does not necessarily perceive that way and therefore try to clarify. And if you know the causes of the conflict, you can actually ex- acknowledge quite a few of those things that may have been contributed by your own uh, naivety and your own insensitivity. insensitivity. So if you have a conflict with, say, interracial conflicts, because they both of them bring lots of prejudices against each other, you know? And uh, they think, oh, they are like that, or oh, they are like that, uh, that kind of thing. Either uh, teaching, treating someone with contempt, or oneself has a very, very p- big problem of superiority complex because saying, well, I'm white, or I'm male, or uh, I'm the boss, that kind of a, uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, you know, well, over esteeming oneself, you know, over esteeming one's own value, and not realizing how that is not going to go very well. See, see, completely unaware, completely unaware that he is, he is so self-important. His over self-esteeming is the problem of the conflict, but he does not know that. So that not knowing this is called avidya. Avidya means ignorance. So person is not. Not, not schooled to know that. Avidya. Vidya means knowledge. And avidya means unschooled, unknowledged, untaught. He doesn't know. So therefore, knowledge is so, imp- so highly prized, be it uh, just normal secular knowledge or spiritual knowledge or just knowledge on any particular technical fields or whatever. When you know the thing, how liberating it is. It just, likewise, we, it's good to know what is the cause of the conflict. The cause of the conflict is largely misunderstanding from our end towards the other, from their end towards us, and for ourselves also we do not know what we are assuming and misunderstanding it on the on the basis of that the moment we are able to understand the cause of the uh, misunderstanding is our one's own ignorance one's own unconsciousness then one will uh, one will learn to restrain that prejudices uh, that view uh, open upon the other people so you will be much more considerate towards other people but when one is not conscious of the cause of the conflict, one is very inconsiderate. Without knowing, it is being inconsiderate. So, so it's a doubles the trouble. Firstly, one is mis- one doesn't know. Secondly, one is not aware. One is inconsiderate, and then because because one is one's causes of the conflict is so much emotional and intellectual kind of obscurity and impairment, if you like. Intellectual impairment is very big. You know, you, you're not fit to do. Exactly. A lot of the time, people are intellectually impaired by their uh, prejudices and contempt and inconsideration of the other. So 
So it's so say if the inter interreligious conflict, that they both are the causes of their conflict is they put down and look down on the other, or prejudiced over the other, and without any willingness to understand where they're coming from, and you might even have a lot of things in comp in common. Instead of becoming cause of conflict, it can be a cause of companionship if one has the ability. But because people aren't so willing uh, to, to understand the real cause of the conflict is one's own self-importance, one's own righteousness, one's own unconsciousness of this. So that's why it is so important to, to uh, in Buddhism, uh, even meditation, uh, even prayer or study of uh, Buddhism is all about the, how those undesirable conflicts occur where they least want it. You know. Why do have why do pe two people who 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 get together to love and live together under whatever circumstances you know whether one is rich or poor one will love unconditionally one says that but it doesn't last long and then within few 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 years if not few months uh, there's this huge uh, catastrophic misunderstanding and uh, and uh, and disappointment from each other and so this comes because both are egotistical and neither of them are aware so that's cause, not only cause and source of the conflict, but it is it's going to feed the conflicts even more. In the longer they they don't detect their own uh, self righteousness and uh, ignorance and uh, and uh, uh, self uh, self importance, and one does not know that one will. Uh, become develop more conflict with other thinking is the other person's lack of cooperation, lack of humility, lack of tenderness towards us. So instead of discovering one's own uh, self creation, one actually externalize and project it onto the other. Now, if that's also happening from the other side towards oneself, you, that's what I call double trouble. And because of that, neither of them are aware of the sources or cause of the affliction, con conflict is their own egotistical mind, and that is making oneself go unconscious and intellectually impaired from knowing the above, let alone resolving in quickly. So therefore, conflict resolution is a it's a, firstly conflict is inevitable. Secondly, you can only resolve it if you know the causes of it. Unless you know the cause of it, you, you, there, there's danger of you misunderstanding the cause of it. You miss and you may, may, may bark at the wrong trees. You might think the cause of conflict is other, because they're not respectful to me. They're not careful to me. They're not kind to me. When one keep thinking that, the other one also keep thinking like. So therefore, neither of them are able to see the actions of their own behavior and the affliction that actually sort of, sort of impairs them from knowing that are the causes of conflict. They instead is thinking that causes of conflict is other. Look at them. He says, hey, he do this to me. He does that to me. He doesn't do this at all to me. Because of that one is so... So, so driven to know or to think that the causes of the conflict is someone else's behavior, one does not know or see one's own behavior, you know? So, so, so therefore, when one is so, so, so engrossed in seeing the flaws of others as the cause of conflict, one does not know one's own conflict, one's own flaws. So, because of the unconsciousness, now unconsciousness make, makes, makes to breed more unconsciousness. Because of these unconscious conscious activities people do do, itself becomes action, action of the action that perpetuates the conflict to escalate, conflict to escalate. So conflict is not just one cause, but the causes, causes become causes, and causes can give condition to certain things to happen. As a result of that, one's own action, one's own language, one's own thoughts and emotion concerning that perpetuates, perpetuates and whips it up, whips it up. And instead of getting to know uh, that it is not the fault of others, it's fault of one's own doing, one actually projects that even everything, it's a result of others. 
And because of this, the conflicts are not resolved. Conflicts are not resolved when the causes and sources of the conflicts are not apprehended. When people do not apprehend the correct source and causes of the conflict, they are more likely to point their finger to non causes uh, uh, and sources of conflict as the true cause of uh, causes and source of suffering. And then there is this mutual blaming. The actual problem is completely left un unresolved. They are like, at each other's throat. So the sources and causes of conflicts are not understood. In Buddhism we call the sources and causes of the problems is the tr true origin of suffering. True origin of suffering. The origin or source of suffering is one's own ignorance, greed, and hatred, and any other, uh, other uh, any kind of, uh, I, I, would say, I would say, faculty of affliction would emerge. They all become like a big group. Uh, this, this, this group of afflictions works against you to the extent of emotionally become obscured, karmically become obscured, and cognitively become obscured. Because of this, uh, the conflict, this conflict is perpetuated. Conflict stay perpetuated as there is no sign of resolving or reducing or scaling down the conflicts because the cause of the conflict is not recognized. It's just like a person who doesn't know the cause of the fire is your own combustible materials in the house. One is still throwing many combustible materials towards the fire. Um, you know, the very combustible material is the cause of the fire. Otherwise, the matchstick wouldn't burn anything unless there were a lot of combustible. Maybe the matchstick is like the people, but if you didn't have any combustible material left there, then even their matchstick would not burn anything. Yeah, matchstick sitting inside the matchbox does not burn anything. So even there are 100 pieces of matchstick that still doesn't burn anything. So the cause is like that, but it has to be conditioned. If the matchstick is, is rubbed against the box, and then it will produce the fire. Likewise, when you are rubbing with other people's conflict towards you, your own conflict, and then you think it's, 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 it's a result of them that you're, you're, you have this conflict. So that kind of misunderstanding escalates the problem because one fails to recognize the true origin of suffering or cause of the problem. One misrecognizes, misidentifies non-cause of the suffering, non-cause of the conflict as a true cause of suffering. Because if one were to recognize the true cause of the conflict, which is one's own ego and a, uh, and a, and, and a driven mind and a, an afflictive mind and angry mind and a very greedy mind, if one does not subjectively, introspectively recognize that, one just doesn't know the causes and sources of the conflict. So those, that's why meditation and self-discipline is very powerful remedy as far as informing and reforming ourselves to tell us that that I need to I need to change my own attitudes, my own thought, and my own reactions, and my own action that I carry I, I carry I uh, by, I I kind of uh, perpetrate uh, um, has to be stopped. If there is this kind of self recognition, then one will be able to stop, and then the conflicts are understood. Not only when you see the other person has no sign of abating, no sign of scaling down, you develop compassion to them. Oh, just as me, is, he is also so mistaken by their self-righteousness and, and gross affliction. And now he, uh, for my lack of any doing any cooperation towards them, I have also made them to be escalated to this level. So I'm partially responsible for their misery, and therefore I must behaviorally change to be tender and loving and supporting to the other instead of pointing finger towards the other. When one is, when one of the two were to think this way, that's because they know the true source or cause of conflict is one's own ego and the other one is, is, is detoured, you know, the other one is equal. Only difference between you and other, other doesn't know this at all. And you actually have the benefit of the knowing this. Because of that, you are in morally empowered to develop and impart compassion 
to the one who is who is and who I, who does not know this, who is unable to know this. Because of that, you feel very pitiful and compassionate for their uh, indeficiency, their deficiency, or the deficiency rather. And uh, and uh, because of that, uh, you can see their sorrow or problem will escalate if you do or to recondition that by reacting and overreacting, thinking as pointing them as if their fault, because they would want to like to hear that, uh, but they like to hear some, from somebody's behavior that uh, that you are actually becoming more kind uh, towards them, because you have now discovered the true cause of suffering is one's own affliction, selfishness. When you become less selfish, then you will be fit. Uh, emotionally, morally, physically, verbally, to actually act with tenderness and kindness and care. And therefore, the conflict is basically, um, conflict is like a fire. Fire is extinguished when you pour the water on it. You know, because you don't have any water, bucket, the bucket is empty, you can't, you can't, you can't extinguish the fire. But you prepared there in danger of fire, you have bucket of water. Therefore, you can throw it on the fire. As soon as it comes, you can, st- you can extinguish it. So conflicts are only resolved if you know and if you're well prepared uh, the danger of this conflict and you are very well equipped spiritually and mentally and how to remedy that by extinguishing it. So if one if, if they are a bit aggressive to you, you have to be a gentle to you. Like fire raging to you, but you got to bring the bucket full of water to, to extinguish it. So in, if they are aggressive to you, which which probably is true, then it's important for the one who knows how to resolve conflict, how to play the opposite role, how to practice gentleness, tolerance, and forgiveness. And try to de-escalate the problem that is in their mind, that is that is that is whipping them to this level of uh, uh, conflicting emotions. When you see this, then there's a lot of pity and empathy in witnessing that, and because of that, you yourself will not resort to another causes and causes of affliction, of the conflict. Uh, you know, you now know how to dim the fire that is burning or extinguish the fire that's burning, because you're not going to pour kerosene on the fire. Most people who don't know the causes and sources of the conflict, they're pouring kerosene on the burning fire, or pouring more wood chips on it. So that's kind of mindfulness, being able to exercise restraint. They call exercising restraint. Because your, your, your reaction has caused the heaviness of the consequences or lightness of the consequence. If you are patient, for instance, someone who is aggressive, then you can actually unscale or mute the problem by your quickness of not, not adding negative to negative. Negative does not, negative is uh, only relative to positive. It's not independently and permanently negative, whatever somebody did. But if you know how to overcome a problem, you've got to know the cause of the problem. So you can't have a result without knowing the cause. You, you can't say, I want to enjoy good health, but you keep eating junk food and do no exercise and no proportion of your food and always eat like cows and like that. Of course, you, it's, you, you, know, you want to be healthy, but you're eating, doing so much so that it's actually counterproductive to your good health. So lots of human conflicts, be that you and your, your somebody, Maybe you don't like somebody at all because what they did. So you, it looks like to you, your source of conflict with them is their action. On the surface, it's true. If they didn't do A or B, you would not be infuriated. But even if they did that, if you had no, uh, uh, if you are not unconscious, you also would not let what they do. To, to be cause of hurt and misery to you, because they are only a condition to cause your real cause of the hurt and conflict is your own ignorance and impaired intellectual uh, functioning. If your intellectual uh, capacity is is malfunctioning, that is the what makes yourself always vulnerable to be harmed and affected and emotionally drowned in sadness and sorrow or, or strife because there is a conflict say between you and your your father or your sister or your what whatever it is, 
all the fact that there is a conflict between some people in in your in your family it's not directly to you but they are not and you get really stressed by that when you think the conflict your your says your stress is caused by their conflict that's misunderstanding the stress that you have as a result of witnessing their conflict is caused by your own selfishness of course, we can't tell everybody it's due to your selfishness you have this conflict. It may not be a very popular thing to say, but those who really want to think there's a lot of grain of truth in that. As soon as you acknowledge your selfishness, then you have now apprehended the cause of the conflict. Of course, if the cause has been paused and halted and on the hold, it, not, it will not cause continue to create damages. It, the damage has been stopped. They cause ceasefire. So if the source of the conflict is enemy attacking you, that's what you think, then you just go, go silent and don't hit, hit for tit for tat type of thing. It will go down. Yeah? So we're talking about how to be cognizant of what we do that may contribute to the escalation or de-escalation. Question is whether you, are, you have the gentleness and humility to uncause the conflict by practicing gentleness, forgiveness, tolerance, and compassion to the other, even if they do something awfully bad, but you feel compassion that they don't they know what they're doing to themselves and you. And, and so when you develop compassion, their harm does not deplete your goodness. Their harm awakens you, awakens you. Why? Because you know the real cause of the conflict is your own selfishness, not what they do. So you have now lost not the power to the other because you have self-empowered yourself how not to play so weak. This is very important, you know. You know, even in, even in, in sporting activities, competition, you want to make a smart move so that the other person's uh, very, very strong move does not sort of defeat you straight away. You need to outperform them by not blaming what they're doing, but understanding how to undo that. So, so therefore, conflict is not about if they, shy, they, if they shoot at you, you also shoot at them. That's not, not a result of conflict. You have to be able to highlight through, by hook or crook, if they are doing something like that, how that will be counterproductive, harmful for themselves. If you can make them and educate them to teach them what actually is they, they are doing, that will help you to not only understand the causes and source of conflict, but also understand the causes of the resolution of the conflict. Causes of the resolution of the conflict is you have to have humility to accept what part of the conflict is your own doing, and you need to take them back. You need to take, make, acknowledge and confess and forgive yourself and others, and then seek their pardon. If you do that, then the, con the, the conflict was maybe, say, if you, in terms of physical weight, maybe conflict was like 200 kilos. And all of a sudden, when you did that, the weight of the conflict has reduced at least by 50% because you totally took advantage, uh, took, uh, take, uh, acknowledge what your share of, uh, of the conflict uh, you have contributed to because of your behavior, you're, you're screaming or you're saying this thing, you're writing that thing, or you're thinking like that. And if you keep doing that without any self-acknowledgement, then the source of a cause of the conflict is undetected. Because of that, even you, you, you try to reconcile it, it's not reconciling because there's no clarity clarification that has been occurred into your own mind. So, so Dharma in the, in the Dharma is a very much like a emotionally try to become very well read and well literate about your own mind. You can read your own mind. If I follow these thoughts and acted on their behalf, it will bring me this and that kind of negative consequences. When you are able to understand the cause of conflict, you have to understand the cause of, of harmony. Yeah, your harmony is uh, not uh, something that exists by itself. Harmony is where you uh, develop peace and tolerance and humility by suffering the kind of suffering the bitter pill of the conflict. And you don't want to live in conflict with somebody. You don't want to be angry at somebody or have resentment towards somebody. If you have that, then you have this very nagging 
that other person did something wrong, you want to punish them, you want to make them guilty for whatever they did, all that kind of mind if you have, that conflict is not, doesn't need to exist out there. That conflict is capable yourself, always harming yourself because of the resentment. So therefore, understanding conflict entails uh, oneself oneself empathetically recognize the frailty of the other who does not have the fitness to know uh, their selfishness, their arrogance, their, their sort of roughness and sort of uh, uh, the approach is so un, uh, you know, some kind of, some uh, never sort of a carefully chosen one because therefore they will instigate, they can, they can in instigate any kind of conflict without there being any conflict the way you, they come over because they're so predisposed negatively now, one who's negatively predisposed, if he or she does not know that, is, that, is, that they are negatively predisposed, they will do so as a drunken person. Yeah, drunken person are, are warned not to drink so because they have to drive home or whatever, or they have to go to work tomorrow or whatever, and so we can dissuade them. And if a person is drunken by their righteousness, it's not a drink from the bottle they drink. It's the self-righteousness. It's this bottle, bottle of body, body, physical me. This bottle of ego in which one has bottled up all this righteousness, unless he's able to see that is the root cause of the problem, he will, whatever he do, will escalate the problem. There is no sign of abating the problem, reducing the problem, or resolving the problem. Why? Because there is no understanding the physics, the mechanics, and the, and the props that has made the conflict to appear as a conflict. Nobody wants to have form a, a form a, a allegiance or relationship with anybody in order to have conflict. But as soon as two people consort between each other, then they have start conflict start cracks to appear because both are arrogant and egotistical, and neither of them aware of that. So it's like being able to spot something nobody can find. And that's awakening. Being able to know the cause and source of your conflict and being able to sort of exercise restraint on that is the mindfulness. So your mindfulness is very fit, fit to know what, what it takes to rescue something from getting bad to worse. So that knowing the sources and causes of the conflict is not only resolution to conflict, but also being able to have the kindness and wisdom to accept people who have problems. And you don't say, oh, we can't have someone like that living with me or around me or whatever. We have our mind, demonic mind. This deluded mind is what we are living. That's the hardest thing to live is this mind. So the hardest cause of conflict that you don't recognize is your own illiteracy of your own mind. You don't see your mind and emotions that you are whipping yourself too much. So when one is unconscious of self self cause of suffering, and that's that's like a worse than a pandemic. At least from pandemic you can you can socially distance, isolate from each other, so you have no danger of contracting and getting infected. But when you don't realize the cause and source of conflict is your own egoism and self-importance, you know, you will have all the problems. You will have conflict. Even though people are treating you nicely, you still have a lot of conflicts of not being able to trust somebody or have faith in something or support someone. Always suspicion and doubt and fear and insecurity and poor me mentality. And these are the causes of the, uh, causes of the conflict. Causes of the conflict. We call traditionally, we don't call conflict, we call afflictions. They are the cause. Your affliction, particularly self grasping, is the cause of your misery, your anxiety. You know, it's not the pandemic, it's not the loss of the business. They may have some effect on some, but others are not attached to it. No, they say this everything is impermanent. So, why you try to make so hard to be permanent? Everybody's life is, in, in, is full of 420 disease. Just question is which one will manifest symptomatically. But yet you think uh, just as soon as they're diseased, that's the end of it. Then you become extraordinarily very, very, uh, very, very upsettable and vulnerable and very, very uh, unstable. 
It's because one is only thinking me. I might die, or this may happen to me, and, and you know, so many people dying every day without this disease. So, so, you, so it's not an end of the world. It's just the nature of the world. It's the question is what is caused when lots of people are dying from cancer or diabetes or high cholesterol or whatever. We don't call them pandemic, but there are probably more people dying from those diseases each day than the so-called pandemic. So, so when one is able to recognize even the pandemic is caused by individuals who are contributing to the collective bad. And uh, because we exploit the mother nature, uh, and therefore when we are hit with the pandemic or some flood or fire, we think it's them, it's them doing that. And so some people blame uh, people in China, and people in China blame some liberals in the USA. So none of them are willing to acknowledge uh, the true source and cause of the the conflict that is now that therefore there's disease there's sickness and therefore they're blaming each other there's death they're blaming each other and so that mode of made blaming the tendency to blame somebody in in a without and in, 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 unashamedly is the cause of the conflict uh, not only conflict, but escalation of the conflict. Ineffectiveness of whatever you try to do by remediating, a rem whatever you do, that's just temporary. You do a course, it becomes temporary. It sounds all good, but you're not, you still, you still hasn't shifted from this egoistic mind. So therefore, recognition of the true cause of the uh, uh, cause and source of the conflict is ego, and therefore, desire and anger and ignorance and jealousy and competitiveness and righteousness, all these things are what we call the, the categories of uh, various afflictions. So when we have lots of these, then you wouldn't get on with your brother or sister or whatever, because even though they're relatively very good and they really are just fine, but because you are so, so nervous, you're so full of this passion, as full of these wrong views in your mind, and then even though things are impermanent, you really wanted to cling on to something permanent. Even though things are volatile, you want you wanted to be not volatile. You know, and you're just going against the current, you know, because of that. So so most of it probably what we're talking here is not so much of a social or interpersonal conflict, but personal conflict. People have themselves, their conscience is completely um, uh, kind of, kind of uh, impaired by the conflict. Uh, because they have one moment they think they love something, the moment, no, another moment they hate it. And um, one moment they want to do it, another moment they just don't want to do it at all. So they're not even cooperating with themselves, let alone they are cooperating with somebody. If you said, I mean, I'm going to do that to, to some friend a long while ago, and when it comes to doing, you're not doing, then they feel let down. So how many let down is enough to, to make you feel completely in conflict? Yeah, and then one it demoralized oneself because one didn't one said one will do that one promised one didn't do it didn't do it didn't do it didn't do it. Uh, how many uh, failures is is uh, is cause of your 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 conflict? Not just many, just a few, you know. But few one is too much if you don't recognize it. If you recognize it, even three or four is not too much. How do you know if you recognize the source or cause of conflict? Then you are much more accepting of that, and but not lump that with yourself, uh, but try to see that as a, you know, uh, they said they said uh, you know. Mm, the best teacher is my latest mistake, they call it. Yeah, so if you look at your latest emotional mistake, that will teach, that is the greatest teacher. Even teachings and Buddha or teachers teach you, that's, that's how to recognize that. So being able to give a due recognition of the conflict uh, and uh, um, nature of the conflict, what one needs to do to resolve, one needs to cause this. Uh, one re once one recognizes the cause, the cause of the conflict, then one now brings a remedy that can uh, uncause the problems.
says selfishness. You try to be, you try to be a bit, become less selfish. Uh, you're a bit arrogant, you become less arrogant. You become so self-righteous, you don't self-righteous. You always tell people's, people's alleged mistake, don't do that. Talk the good things about them, however small they are. If you do that, this will clarify. They like, they like you saying things that are very positive and tender and loving and respectful. When you say that, even you have conflict with them, you're not talking about how to resolve the conflict. But when you're talking nice things about them, it slowly softens the problem already. You know, the problem has been softened because you've been you've been able to think and say things that are pleasant to their little ears and minds. So when you are skillful enough to do that, then then the conflict does not exist. Conflict does not keep burning. There is not a pilot, pilot kind of light there that keep burning. Conflict will be snubbed. You know? As soon as you do say something nice to them, do something nice for them, and then that they are not going to sort of raise the subject of the conflict. Because why? Because something good's happening. And who wants to talk about the bad? Yeah, see? So amazing. You're so constructive and creative. The conflict didn't become a cause of the misery. Conflict become cause of remedying uh, the misery because you are skillfully able to uh, create causes for harmony, causes for uh, developing rapport, rapport between you and other, uh, reconnecting with them. When you do that, slowly this soothes the problem and the problem itself becomes unmentionably small. Why? Because there's a bigger picture that which is for which you are now doing. So the reason why we have to uh, know the causes and sources of conflict is because we want to resolve the conflict. It's possible to prevent any such conflict from arising in the future. Why? Because you're very consciously cognizant of your mind and the state, and you do not, you mind your mouth and word, hands and words, because if you are a cognizant of your own mind, likely to fall under the spell of those afflictions. When you don't see afflictions as afflictions, when you don't see your flaws, but only see the flaws of others, you will have incessant conflict. The moment you start to see some good things about, about them, um, maybe different opinion to other people, people might say, how are how you be so nice to him when he's like that? But, but you, have to, you have to learn to differ with them because as soon as you do that, you are more boosted to be able to resolve the problem without any intimidation. Because you are emotionally and intellectually now formidably strong to know the cause of conflict as well as the cause of harmony. Cause of harmony. Do you want harmony or conflict? If you want a harmony, do things that are small acts of kindness and consideration and respectful to the other. And when you do that to them, you're not sort of by bribing them as such, but you know it is, it is going to be cause of their, their comfort, their hope, their optimism. And if you can do that, yeah, you, you, you're, you're able to, you don't have enmity towards them from the past. Why? Because you're hard, you're, caused, you're trying to do something that can scale it down, that can de-escalate, that can resolve that problem through your harmonious, respectful, courteous activities. So there's a, such, an, a, such an important skill uh, uh, to be able to, uh, to, be able to uh, resolve conflict. When you're able to understand the sources and cause of the conflict, you can resolve conflict, but also you, you, know, you, know how, you know how to resolve conflict. It will take time sometimes. Even though you are doing something wonderful, nice, doesn't mean they will instantly become gratified. Sometimes they might even suspicious why you're doing that. But even that, you are you you with your good intent want to do just that, you know, so that so that their misery is 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 remedied by your skillfulness. So what is conflicting emotions? Conflicting emotions are just scattered mind, and the remedy for the scattered mind is collected mind. And that collected mind is called mindfulness. When the mind is very well collected, it knows how to not waste its time and essence and energy. 
And it, because there's a loss, the loss a lot in conflict. When people are in conflict with each other, their friendship is lost. What they what they mean to each other is forgotten, ignored. It's just to, totally sort of f- forgotten, and and uh, and you have no, you have lesser person to respect and love and rejoice. And you, it will add to your misery. Conflict, unresolved conflict, brings misery, and that misery can be very depleting to your physical wellness. And and emotional clarity, and let alone intellectual is rational power. So therefore, being able to uh, resolve conflict by knowing the causes and sources requires oneself to have a discipline, to meditate. Discipline and meditation. When you have a good discipline to meditate, meditate means being present. And, and, and when, you, when you're with good discipline, you meditate, you become more present, and then in that state of clarity, presence of mind, you develop wisdom how not to uh, escalate the conflict consciously. And you even know how to consciously harmonize them, the issue, by fo- focusing on something else rather than over fighting over small issues. So you don't attack the person with whom you're conflict. You to be gentle towards the person, be soft towards the person, be hard on the real cause of the problem, which is your own naivety, which is your own ignorance and self-righteousness. When there is this, this clear delineation and which is the cause, which is the remedy, of course, you wanted to get the remedy. Remedy is the cause for harmony, and uh, uh, conflict is the result of uh, opposite. So you don't do the disharmonious thing. You don't say, speak condescending things, hurtful things, negative things, uncaring things. You do this, and that, that con- even though the conflict was small, it wouldn't take long to escalate. Even though there was rational, reasonable conflict going on, but the moment you practice these remedies consciously, all the conflict has been has been, will be slowly subtracted and minimized, and maybe even just completely dissolved. You know that really exists, and so that's why um, mindfulness of uh, your thoughts, your feelings, and your own uh, emotions are crucial. Uh, to uh, to help people to uh, resolve conflict between races, be, between gender, and before between different cultures and between different groups or clubs or societies, organizations, uh, and then you can actually empathize and put yourself in their shoes, put yourself then in, in their shoes, and put others in your position, and uh, and then try to look at you and yourself in their position and then look at you when you do that you will you will have the fitness to change your way of maneuvering or what you do to resolve the issue and when you have that uh, then that makes you become so uh, not burdened by the problem the conflict taught you so much you know it makes you feel developed even more compassion to those who don't have a clue how to resolve conflict but you are not aversive to conflict. You are interested why conflict is still there when nobody wants it. Alas, poor sentient being, they just don't know how the cause and source of the conflict is ego and self-righteousness and lack of discipline. But if you can teach all those things to somebody, including oneself, you can remedy the past conflict, you can forgive the past, you can renew the future uh, with a completely new set of mind that actually sees quite a different from the different perspective that previously didn't know how to begin. So with this, we have concluded here. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, may you have a good day and clear some of the personal emotional conflict between you and your past or your people, what you think. Some people are so fundamentalist about what they think is right. And that righteousness is one of the most hardest cause of conflict. So recognize that, and that will make yourself to part, part from the, the wrong views and the wrong attitude and righteousness. If you can part from that, that's, that's a one negative influence you do not need. Uh, and then uh, you can see with great 
ability to impart compassion to those who behave like that too. And you can see, oh, I used to be like that. You know, they're still doing like that. And then you will not go back to that because you have certain uh, dignity and confidence and certitude and, and, and certain, certain level of character that you have now re transformed yourself. So with this, we will conclude here. Thank you very much. I will do this short dedication merits from your kindness of listening to these uh, ideas. And, uh, and uh, we can spread these ideas through our action and thoughts and speech. Oh, by the mirror, 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 Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Take care. Stay safe. See you next time.